Welcome back to Blank Canvas. Tonight we are going to be, uh, I'm going to be trying to do a full color portrait of Chelsea, our model. I am working in pastels tonight. It's one of my favorite mediums for doing a live model because it's very fast. I don't have to wait for my paint to dry. Uh, and it's just a wonderful media. The only uh, possible handicap with pastels is you really do need the correct color because you can't mix it up as easily as you could if you were doing an acrylic painting or watercolor painting, but it still works very well. The paper that I'm using is called Cancel My Ten. It's one of the favorite ones that I have, or Fabriano is also another one that I like. I like to choose a paper that has a uh, a little bit at least of tooth because it helps hold more of the layers of pastel that I'm applying. And um, right now I have Chelsea in a lovely pose uh, with one of her hands is up framing her face. So I'm just gonna quickly begin sketching this particular drawing. And okay, and then now I'm going into, and again, this is just a really quick sketch to kind of give me an idea of what's my composition gonna look like because I wanna make sure that the arms and hand and so on are going to be in this particular drawing. So of course I wanna make sure that I haven't made anything so large that it doesn't fit. And now I've already got the oval that will indicate Chelsea's head. And now I begin with uh, my division lines for the nose, eyes, and Chelsea is in an almost face-on pose right now. So now I just am going to begin with, as I've said before, the all-important eyes, my favorite measuring tool. And again, remembering that that space between the eyes is usually about another eye width apart. And Chelsea has those beautiful lids over her eyes. And this is when I'm really, really concentrating on those features, like noticing Chelsea's very straight eyebrow almost on that one side. And just taking note how close those eyebrows are to the upper lid. And just going to, and also making sure, remember when you're positioning, positioning your pupils that, that you've got the eyes. If one's over to the left, the other one should be over to the left too. So you're not making your model have a eye problem that they really don't have. I'm drawing and I'm just going back. And now I'm just measuring out where are the edges of my nostrils going to lie. And again, I am drawing with a, with a Conti right now. And it's just a really nice tool for me to think about different shadowings that I'm going to be using. Thinking about my hair, how's that gonna be positioned, giving her forehead room. And looking at down here. And keeping in mind all those highlights as I talked about before. It's gonna be one here in the eyes. There's always the best highlight and of course above the lips. And we'll be coming to that later when we're starting to apply our color. It's always interesting how the model from different angles, her mouth even looks just a little bit different from this pose, which I guess that certainly makes sense. And I'm also I fill in the lips right away. Uh, the upper lip, as I said before, is going to be darker than the bottom because of the shadow from the nose. Now I'm thinking about beautiful high cheekbones. And always measuring those spaces like from the edge of her cheek, kind of a squared 
right in there, coming in, and again measuring. This has got a very nice chin. And as you can see, as I'm progressing in this drawing and just building it up, some of those lines that I initially had put in are being drawn over and ignored because they've served their purpose, which was just to give me a basic starting point. And now I'm just looking at those shadows, which are such an important part of any drawing. And some of the lines are quite hard, and other ones, this one uh, particularly going down the cheek, is a lot softer with a highlight area in there that I'm just going to mark to myself so I remember to keep that. And then again, I'm just going to basically put in right now sort of the width of the hair just to block that in, coming in behind here. And when I'm uh, placing the models figure on my paper, I make sure, well, I generally, unless I'm trying to do a different technique, I generally will make sure that I have space at the top above the model's head because I don't want it to be right at the top of the paper and then when I start to mat in, I may have the top of the hair that I actually wanted to include has now been cut off just because I've put the model too high up in the paper. So now I'm just looking again. I don't even have to worry about ears with Chelsea, so that's, that's uh, I guess it's an added bonus, although I do like to draw ears. And I'm seeing this one sh shoulder is a little bit risen. So again, just and a beautiful delineation of the shape of the arm here. That I certainly don't want to miss that. And now I'm planning out uh, putting in that hand that Chelsea's got up. I'm seeing that the one finger goes up to the height of her base of her nostril, again, just measuring across, and then getting that finger sort of positioned in right there. And then the other fingers are coming just to rest against the edge of Chelsea's cheek, and kind of follow that line. And again, remembering that we want to ensure that that hand is large enough. And again, remembering that the hand is the size about of the face. So I'm just going to block that in again. And the baby finger is going to be smaller. And then just getting that graceful curve of hand right in here. Very lovely. And minimizing that finger. And again, this is a nice part when you're using your Conti. If you don't like what you've done, it's just a simple draw over because right now we're just ensuring that what we're putting down on paper is what we're going to want to keep as our finalized lines. Okay, just coming in with the inner line there. Okay, and so we're looking at strap of the tank top, line coming in here, and we only get to see, again, watching that slope of shoulder. This shoulder is definitely lower than the other one, and we just do one more measurement to make sure and that everything is lining up as it should. I'm catching that this Drop shoulder is below the wrist line. So I'm making sure, yes, that's making sense. And it does. And then this is angling up. Again, I'm checking to make sure whatever I'm measuring on my model is also coming back across onto my drawing. And catching that full arm. And then we have another hand that's going to be wrapping around the other arm. And a lot of times when I'm doing the hands, I'm not going to be spending a lot of time perfecting it because very many times I have drawn in the, the all that information only to find out that the model has, has moved even 
just a little bit. So because that happens so often, I'm just gonna sort of indicate that and finish off a little bit. I always wanna include my support, whether it be the back of a chair or whatever is going to be the support for the model, but you have to remember that that is an important part to have in your drawing because you don't wanna have your model floating in air and looking like you're not sure where she is on, in this drawing because there's no ground support for her. So again, just looking at some of these shadows that I wanna complete and the hair is in there. Okay, so that's her basic start drawing. And now what I'm going to just again, I've kind of got some of the shadowing in here. I haven't done a lot around the eyes and so forth, but that's her basic drawing right here. And I'm going back and sort of seeing, do I really like how this hand position is? And I'm just gonna check that one more time and get getting this over here, get those fingers in, and then these are behind, behind, so like that, like that, and change that out a little bit more. Okay, fairly happy with that, and we're gonna work on that all more. So now I'm going to be looking at um, the different colors that I'm going to be using for my shadows, and I like to use an overall, generally an orangey hue. I never would draw somebody with a white face, even though people kind of get thinking that, oh, she has white skin, it's white. No, it is not white. There's a lot of color. And particularly when our model is under lights, you'll really notice that there's there is definitely a lot of color in, in the skin. And of course, if you do have a, a, a model with, with brown skin, deep brown skins, you'll see lots and lots of wonderful, wonderful hues in there. And um, I, I'm just putting these shadows in. Of course, Chelsea's, I've had people say, I do not have purple hair or I do not have blue skin, but I like to put these colors in. I think they make for very interesting shadows. One of my teachers always used to say, some of the best shadow colors are the colors that you see in our veins, going purples, blues, greens. And so generally those are the colors that I use when I'm just dropping in some of my shadows early on here. And of course, once you put in uh, more neutral skin tones, they will not look as strong. And I also like to block in some that I'm gonna be using for her hair. And just looking again at some of the deep areas that I'm gonna probably even make far more deep than that. And coming in here and just looking at some of these nice shadows that I wanna catch right away. Very nice lighting. If I was drawing this without these, these lights and shadows, this would be such a flatter drawing, painting. Those highlights just are such a critical. Now I'm just laying in a neutral tone and I'm still able to see my basic drawing underneath. As I'm drawing, I like to put the colors that I'm using into my background. Just sort of thinking about developing that so it's not a big surprise at the end. Like, what do I do with my background? A lot of people say they are, are fairly confident when it comes to the part where they're actually just doing the, the person, but it's how do they get something that goes, I guess goes with, goes with the, the face or figure, whatever they're drawing, what, what is gonna 
work with them. And so if you continue to add color as you're going along, it just makes it a little bit easier when you get to the final. I'm just gonna quickly set in. Just again, I love these eyes and I wanna make sure that I keep them as my measuring point. And, and I'm just trying to see what this guy is. And I'm just gonna sketch in a few things that I want to keep those details because again, when you're doing a portrait, you detail is important. There are a lot of people who can do a portrait that you can still really recognize even though they haven't done the features very exactingly, but I think it's, for, for me, it's a very important part is being able to, to define the actual shape of the eyes and make sure that that's a representation of Chelsea's features. So I'm just gonna come back in and block those in because a little bit of this got lost, of course, once we we're putting in the general face colors. And just catching that beautiful upper lid and those glorious shadows in there, coming back. And again, you'll notice that I'm constantly re-going over and rebuilding as I'm drawing. And that way you're also kind of making constant corrections as necessary. And again, just checking those, are my lines accurate? I'm looking at, is a pupil line extending down to where the edge of the lip is? And again, I'm gonna move this eye over because I feel like it could be over a little bit more. Just with the nose. And catching those shadows in there, coming down on this side. And of course, you'll notice that this side has far, far stronger shadow. And that's what's really going to define the nose is those gorgeous shadows around the nose. And these beautiful highlights then on the other side to complement that. And I'll be coming in, of course, later on with, now is a good chance for me to take a look, get those that beautiful cheekbone and just a very nice rounded right there. And again, going into now the lip line. Really take time with your lip line too. The mouth is, very important, and it can give a really great expression. I've even had models who just gave me a sort of a quick grin at some point, and, and it can change, because a lot of times when you're drawing a live model, they can look pretty serious and severe. Although Chelsea has a gorgeous expression on her face, and that's not even a concern, but sometimes if your model looks really serious, you'll watch, I watch for the time when they might have a little glimmer of a smile, and then just even change the, the mouth enough to just give an indication. Okay, so now we're checking again. Yes, we've got pupils lined up, edge of mouth, and coming back to that beautiful cheek. Liking that, liking that. Okay, so now I'm also going to get into some of the colors that we're gonna put. The area across the cheeks, nose, is our most warm area of the face. So that's where you're gonna see more of the cheek color that we're used to. And I'm also gonna put that same color into the lips right in here. And I've already darkened the upper part of the lip. And again, just that would go across the nostrils. And just 
going to get some more of this for the shadows under the eyes. I was able to take a portrait class from uh, a very wonderful portrait artist uh, uh, by the name of Dodie Ballantyne. And she, is, she would never uh, probably go with the colors that I use in my portrait. She's a believer in using everything exact. She actually matches the colors before she puts them in just to make sure that they're a very exact color. But again, it's everybody has um, different styles. And I think it's a really important thing to, to find your own style. Find, find a way that you're comfortable painting and that you enjoy seeing in your work. Um, because I have painted with um, the group of people at the Hat Art Club for a number of, of years with many of us, um, I would be able to recognize their work, I would say, almost anywhere, just because that is certainly something that, that becomes very recognizable is each of us have individual styles and I think that's a really wonderful thing. You don't want everybody's work to look like yours. You, you hope that everybody will be able to create some individuality with, with their work, with their paintings. And now I'm using a much lighter color than what I had uh, put the original skin tone in as. And I'm just looking for some of the lighter, but still not into the white areas. They're just lighter, but just lovely. And really, uh, squinting is a huge, important tool of any artist because you really do need to squint. You really need to, to be carefully breaking apart the light areas, the mid-tones, dark areas. And squinting seems to be the best way to, to delineate those variances in tone. Again, just blocking a little bit more color here. You keep going back to that again and again as you're building up your, your piece. When I'm uh, painting, I very seldom use black other than for the, the nos or for the pupil because there are lots of other choices that you can use that, that are more lifelike. The black is, I think, almost dulling. And, and there's so many gorgeous colors, so you want to take advantage of them. One of the other gorgeous lights that I try to always remind people about is look for the one that goes around the, the, the tear stack right in here. It's a gorgeous light, a gorgeous, important light. I'm just going to mark in, uh, and I'll probably redo that highlight again later, but I'm just getting that particular light in. And of course, the, the eye is a very moist organ, so that's why you're going to see a lot of shimmery lights in the eye. And I'll just, and there's a lot of shadow in the eye too that you have to remember occurs because of the eyelid, particularly the upper lid, is going to, is going to uh, create a shadow, particularly on the upper ball of the eye. And just coming in with this beautiful pink. So there's all kinds of color in the eye. 
and we want to really remember that. And I'm just going to get that pupil blocked in. Here's my sparse use of black. And especially when I have a model with just these gorgeous warm brown eyes, I'll be looking for uh, kind of a gold. It's usually what I'm putting in there at the base of the eye, just to give it again a little bit more luminosity. Because you want the eyes to appear as lifelike as possible. Because they truly are, I feel, one of the most important areas of your full portrait. And just that outline there. And now I'm just bringing in that bit of shadow over the over from the upper eyelid. And again, working again to just enhance that shadow. And think about that eyebrow. And again, bring in this shadow here. And it just gives so much more depth to the eye. It's very important. And then just... color is so beautiful. Bring in some pink, some warmth to the cheeks again here. And going back out again. And I was going to comment also, you may have noticed I'm a left-handed artist, which can have its drawbacks because I generally am very dirty when I draw. And, and, and I think most people who do pastels are are pretty dirty by the end of the night because of course the pastel picks up a lot on your hands and so forth. But I really find that I have all kinds of colors in, in my, on my hands and so forth. And this is going to be the end of this, this particular uh, segment. And we are dropping this segment right now uh, to give Chelsea a little bit of a break. And we will be rejoining for the completion of the portrait. And uh, stay tuned for part two.